I would like to ask you a question. How would you feel if tonight God were to call you home to Him? Would you be ready to meet the Lord face to face? Would you be needing the prayers of your loved ones that you leave behind? Should the Lord call you back to Him tonight? I know I would. I would like to imagine that I would be ready to meet the Lord face to face. But the reality is that I feel unworthy. I feel not ready totally. And that if the Lord were to call me home tonight, I would be needing the prayers of my loved ones that I leave behind. The Church assures us that we are one, one body in Christ, and that we have the prayers of all our loved ones beyond death. Hence, the Church gives us a special month in the year, November. It begins with the Feast of All Saints. And then, the 2nd of November, All Souls Day. Both these days and the entire month are a reminder to us of what we pray every time in the Creed. I believe in the communion of saints. I would now like to reflect with you on an important theme best expressed through a question a young man asked me. Father, he said, why should I pray for the dead? After all, they are dead and gone. They have it made. It is I who am here and have it far from made. That is why the Church gives us this month of November, which begins with the Feast of All Saints and the next day All Souls Day, and the whole month as a reminder to us that we are united as one body in Christ. From the very early days of the Church, there has been a strong tradition of remembering all the dead. In the 4th century, Cyril, Bishop of Jerusalem, reminded the faithful that in the Eucharist, at two special moments, we remember the dead. The first moment in the Eucharist is a time when we remember all the faithful who have gone to their rest, those who were prophets, those who were saints, those who were martyrs, and above all, the Blessed Mother, Mary Ever Virgin. We remember them by asking them to pray for us. After all, they are in God's glory. They see His face. They are near to Him. And so they pray on our behalf, interceding that we too one day will be like them in God's glory. On the 1st of November, All Saints Day, we remember all those people who do not feature on the calendar of saints, those who might never have the opportunity to be canonized and yet are saints because they are in God's presence, in His glory, in heaven. They could be our parents, our grandparents, our loved ones who have gone to their rest and are now in God's glory. And so we remember all the saints, praying that they, near to God, will intercede for us on our behalf, that one day we too will be with them in the glory of God. And then comes the second moment in the Eucharist, when we remember to pray for all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, all the dead, whose faith is known to God alone. What do our prayers do for them? This is an important question. It's not easy to answer, but the best way to answer it is by listening to the words of Jesus in the Gospel according to St. John. In the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, verses 39 and 40, Jesus says, 
And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Therefore, when we pray for the dead, we are praying that the words of Jesus be fulfilled. We are praying, Thy will be done. Jesus came to bring us all back to the Father, that we might one day see the Father face to face. And so he sent us his Spirit to unite us to the Father. Seeing the Father face to face is heaven. Being in the Father's presence is heaven. And our prayers for the dead are a hope that our loved ones will be with the Father face to face in his glory in heaven. Now, for some human beings, at their death, it is immediately possible that they see God face to face, that they experience his presence, heaven, because they lived a life of love, which is the life of God. But for many other human beings, at their death, this is not immediately possible, seeing God face to face. Therefore, they need a process of purification. They need to be cleansed from whatever prevents them from seeing God face to face. This process of purification, this cleansing, is what we call purgatory. The best way to describe purgatory is to give you an example. Now, all of us like to drink pure, clean water. But the water that comes to us in our taps each day is quite contaminated. It's rather unclean. It needs to be purified. Therefore, we use water purifiers that have a filter. The impure water goes through the filter, is purified, cleansed, the bad elements washed away, and we get clean, fresh, pure water. Purgatory is something similar. It is that filtration, that process of cleansing, of anything that contaminates us, especially sinfulness, egoism, selfishness, anything against love, so that with pure love we come in the presence of the one who is true love. So our prayers for our dead are intended that they be purified to come in God's presence. There's another reason why we pray for the dead, and the reason is love. Love never ends. Love goes beyond space and time and even death. My love for my parents and grandparents who have gone ahead of me continues. And it's my love that enables me to pray for my loved ones. My prayers are a sign of my love for them. And therefore my love seen through my prayers is a sign that the God of love might be merciful to my loved ones so that they too might be in his glorious loving presence. And I hope that one day they, once in his presence, will then keep praying for me because of their love for me. And so, I now invite you to pray with me that beautiful prayer which the Church has taught us, the prayer for our loved ones who are dead. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen.